Hey. Yeah, I know I've been away for a while, but here I am right now. Herman Scuttle, and uh, I have a lot to say, and I'm saying it. First, let's take a look at the news. A hair salon owner in Ohio named Steve Warden. He set a world record by creating the largest human hairball. It weighs 225 pounds, and it's made from hair clippings from his salon. Mr. Warden also had a sale on hair color, and three people died. Uh, Also in the news, a German shepherd from Leamington Spa, England. The German Shepherd gave birth to 16 puppies. That's twice the number for the breed. Meanwhile, another German Shepherd from the same town was killed by a cat. The cat got stuck in the dog's throat. And uh, finally in the news, a New Zealand man named Zane Wedding. He went to his doctor complaining of blockage in his ear. Turned out to be a cockroach in Mr. Wedding's ear canal. Well, the doctor was able to kill the cockroach by swatting it with a newspaper, proving that the media can be very toxic. Uh, Now then, I'll tell you that I was... uh, taking a walk in the rain along the Ashawiltacook Rail Trail. You know where that is, right? Okay. I was getting in a few good workout miles. I was getting soaking wet. But I was getting peace and quiet. It was just me and the ducks. Now, the ducks paired off. Each couple had a dapper, outfitted male, and a drab, brown female. That's the way it goes with the ducks. Well, they hugged the shoreline of the Cheshire Reservoir, and they only had food and sex on their minds. But in a swamp pool, walled in by reeds, there was a threesome two males and one female. I said, what's this all about? And the female said, one's my lover, the other's my ex-husband. Well, that's odd, I said. Oh, really, said the lady duck. An old jackass like you, walking alone in the rain? Tell me you ain't never been the third wheel before. See, ducks know all about unconditioned love, unconditional love. Of course, my species, not so much. Unconditional love among the human race has gone to the dogs. Guys like me get uh, tired and all floppy, and we don't get second chances. And that's tragic because there's at least one woman still out there without me to fetch and patrol for her. So she's reduced now to six cats and no lovers. The lovers got old and they went impulse shopping for trophy mates. But I'm telling you that this one woman... She woulda, coulda, shoulda been more or less perfection by now. And now time's running out. My nose said, recycling me for lapdog service would be very smart of her. So I wandered up on her porch just to see what would happen just like I did when I was astray the first time around. 
when I was the mad dog, untamed and unaccustomed to giving unconditional love. Well, I got there. And the first thing I found out was she has no cats, just one dog. And because that excitable little dog of hers didn't know me, he yapped and snarled as soon as I came through the front door. He was a little terrier type named Tucker. Now look, I called in advance. I always do that. I'm not that stupid. I called this woman in advance, and she invited me to come for a visit. And, um, well... She just so happened to be my former spouse. But there was no yapping and snarling between us. None of that these days. That kind of bad behavior used to be mutual back when I was fully rabid and foaming at the mouth. But now this dog of hers, this Tucker, the irritable pipsqueak cur, he wouldn't quit. He yelped. He scowled. He nipped at my ankle. How could me and my ex have some cheery quality time in the company of this antagonistic pest? Well, (laughs) my ex was prepared. She had a timeout cage for the dog. And once inside, the dog went mute. Coffee was served, and we exchanged memories and gossip and twisted humor. And as I was leaving, I pointed to the subdued dog in the cage, and I said, you know, if you had one of those things to put me in when we were together, we'd still be married. She paused, and she said, well... You sure as hell ain't getting a second chance. Now, I will take you back, if I may, to the 1990s when I was living in a different place, in a a much different place than I am now. I live in Pittsfield, but I was living in New York City at the time, and Someone was knocking at my door one day. This is back in the 1990s. Even though I had a sign posted outside saying, think twice before you knock. I was living in a building with people I despised, and I made a concerted effort to make sure they felt an equal amount of contempt for me. Those Dead beats made my right mind wrong. They made my eyes sweat. My apartment neighbors were pure dead beats, professional promise breakers. Oh, sure, I'll pay the rent, they would say. Just let me get my foot in the door. And then, with their foot inside, they'd do a sidestep. They'd circumnavigate what was due and what was overdue. And they said, oh boy, just let them try to evict me now. Meanwhile, I was eating three squares of dog food every day, right out of a can, and washing it down with cloudy tap water. But when I lived on the poverty line, frugality more or less carried me forward. And I somehow was always able to pay the bills on time every time. Malnourished? Yes. Malingerer? No. So back to the knocking on my door. Who dared knock on my door? Well, excuse me, but it was Vladimir Putin. Come on. It was Vladimir Putin, and he said he was stopping by for an arm wrestling challenge. He said, best of three collects 5,000 rubles. Well, 
Final score, three wins for me and zero for Putin. But the creepy Muscovite wouldn't pay. He said, I'm embarrassed that you beat me, more embarrassed that I have no money. I said, knock, knock. He said, who's there? I said, Crimea. He said, Crimea who? I said, Crimea River. Tough guy. And put on your shirt and get out of here. Well, I think that deadbeat Putin came back a few more times, but he must have seen the new sign on my door, and he must have gotten demoralized. My new sign read, the answer is no. Now go away. You want a song? You want to hear a song? Okay. I wrote this song last night just for you. I'm shipwrecked, baby, shipwrecked, shipwrecked again. I said, I'm shipwrecked, baby, shipwrecked again. I'm shipwrecked, baby, and I'm going down the drain. Well, I'm a train wreck, mama. I'm way off the track. I said, I'm a train wreck, mama. I'm way, way off the track. I'm a crashing and burning, and that's a natural fact. Well, it's a head-on collision. Don't look, close your eyes. When you're driving with a death wish, somebody always dies. Well, mayday, mayday, I ain't playing no games. Mayday, 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 I ain't playing no games. Adios, mama. I believe I'm going down in flames, yeah. Okay. It's okay. I know you like it. I know. Now then, um, I told you about some of my living conditions. Uh, currently, I live in a different place than the one I just told you about with Putin. Yeah. Uh, but the people in my building in Pittsfield, uh, they're no less annoying, no less peculiar than any other place I've lived. And I'll tell you right now about one of them, Mild Bill. See, Mild Bill was mild because he had a good pension. And that pension let him buy cases of Cuervo and cartons of Newport. Enough drink and smoke to keep him slow motion numb until expiring. Yeah, mild Bill, he worked security and maintenance for Berkshire Housing. He worked there long enough for a snug retirement income alcohol and cigarettes and cheap rent in a Berkshire housing studio flat, a furnished 12 by 12 foot space with a shower and a kitchenette right there in downtown Pittsfield, midpoint of Berkshire County, Massachusetts. Mild Bill's apartment, get this, Mild Bill's apartment was once lived in by three separate victims of self-destruction. One from overdose, one from Russian roulette, and one from swan diving off the roof. The day he moved in, Mild Bill was told the history of the apartment. The housing woman said, careful, Bill. This place is bad luck. (laughs) But Mild Bill, 
He lived with no pills, no guns, and he had strong acrophobia. And at $400 a month, utilities included, my old Bill was unperturbed. He said, one man's jinx is another man's adventure. And he'd been living there for five years with not much self-slaughter. But Mild Bill was found dead last night, home alone, sitting at the window. He was holding a drink and a smoke. He was decomposing, and he had a big smile. The coroner said, Bill must have been like that for a few days. The reek of the departed would be hard to wash away, and the next dweller would have to manipulate a jinx or an adventure, a choice of either wild or mild. Hey, <laughs> have you got your uh, vaccination card? I do. Here's mine. I have my vaccination card, and now I have three Pfizer entries on my shot card. Now, they're telling me that when I get 10 shots on the card, I get a free balloon filled with yogurt. Then... I can stick a needle in the balloon and have pop culture. <sighs> Shall I take you back to uh, last Christmas Eve? Let me take you back to last Christmas Eve. Why not? Let's go back. That's when I met a man. And uh, if I knew his name or anything about him, I'd tell you. But I had no idea who he was. He was just a man in passing. I was on my way back from getting bread and milk in the newspaper over at the convenience store. It was Christmas Eve in Pittsfield. But this man, he knew me. He shouted, Herman, hey, Herman, how you doing? I could see that he was feeling the cold weather more than I was. He was shivering. He was hunched forward. He was wearing a worn-to-shreds Red Sox jacket with a hoodie underneath. No hat, no gloves, sweatpants, run-down running shoes. Hey, Herman, I got a birthday coming up, he said. His face was... Well, it was showing years of rot gut and chain smoke. He said that his birthday was coming up New Year's Eve. Well, I said, well, let me say happy birthday to you in advance, I said. And by the way, you say you're born on New Year's Eve? How did your parents manage that? <laughs> that gave him a big laugh followed by a big cough. Then he said, hey, uh, Herman, uh, how about uh, 50 cents? You got 50 cents I could borrow? Well, I gave him all the cash that was in my pocket, $12 and some change. And I said, always good to see you, my friend. We bumped fists, and he shuffled across the street got to the middle of the road, and he turned and he said, God bless you, Herman. Well, back home, I put away the milk and the bread, and I fell asleep reading the newspaper. But it was a transient sleep with hazy dreams. But I was getting yuletide comfort and joy in small measures. Hmm. <laughs> well, <laughs> I uh, oftentimes tell you to uh, 
please don't send me any mail. And I've got something new here. But let me first tell you, um, I have so much to say, and I'm saying it. Before I get to these things, uh, back to the uh, apartment situation with me. I just, I have all of these things on my mind about apartment living. Let me tell you about what happens there when I'm, I'm bored and uninspired. What I do is, when I am bored and uninspired, I leave my apartment door wide open. And then, sooner or later, one of my 40 neighbors, one of my 40 peculiar neighbors in the building, one of them will walk in. Hinky walked in. Hinky is my age, lives across the hall. He's a reasonable facsimile of Lenny from Of Mice and Men, as big and dumb as they come. Well, I was watching a clip of Adele on my laptop. She was singing the James Bond song at the Oscars, Skyfall. Well, Hinky pulled up a chair next to me and stared in awe. And when the song was over, he said, Wow, that Shirley Bassey looks great for her age. Let's get to this uh, whatever it is. It's not mail. It's... um, Somehow, uh, folks who watch this program, this Herman Scuttle thing here, uh, are inspired now not to uh, not to send in long-winded messages. They've just got like little questions or something, little things, very short and sweet. I don't necessarily like it, but I like it better than those long-winded nasty letters that they send me. Here's one from Bruno. Bruno says, I'm having a hard time teaching my elephant to play the piano. Well, that's too bad, Bruno, but it proves that size matters. Uh, Roxy is here. Roxy says, uh, when opportunity knocks... I'm not sure what to do. Roxy, pretend you're not home. Orion writes, I'd like to do more reading. How should I start? Well, you can start by putting subtitles on your TV. Uh, Here's something from Chardonnay. She says, I'm having really, really, really bad luck with my scratch tickets. What would you do if you were me? Well, I'd start buying scratch tickets at a luckier store. And the last one comes from someone named Rocco. Rocco says, I hate doing laundry. Any suggestions? Yeah. Do less laundry and use more deodorant. Well, um, I see that I've been giving uh, a late-breaking news item. I'll pass it along, and I guess then we'll just wrap it up here. Okay. How did you like the presentation so far? I look. I came here today. I had a lot to say, and I believe that I said it. So here's the last news item: Residents of Texarkana, Texas, say a recent storm brought raining fish over the city. Well, that's a phenomenon that happens sometimes when small fish are swept up in water spouts and they rain down during a rainstorm. And always remember, if you give someone a fish, you'll feed them for a day. 
if you give them a poisoned fish, you'll feed them for a lifetime. Uh, well, I'm going to go uh, go back home, and I'm going to think of some more things, and I'll try to come back sooner. I know I've been away for a while. You may have seen a repeat of me a million times, and you're sick of it, but uh, I'll do my best. So long until next time.